Okay, welcome everyone to another live sessions game brought to you by chess.com. I am International Master Daniel Wrench, and it is time for us to play once again. Okay, he plays d4, knight f6, and plays knight f3. What exactly is he planning, is the question. Um, is he going to play a Tory, or is he one of these guys who just likes to mess around with his move order? Obviously, if he's going to prepare to bring his bishop out to g5 or f4 and play a solid London or Tory system, we got to be ready for that. Uh, and because of those move orders, I actually have my own kind of special move order I like to play against knight f3 on move 2, and that is with c5, and we'll explain why. Uh, because I've also played a lot of Blumenfeld and Bononi positions in my career, as well as Queen's Indians, I don't particularly fear uh, White playing d5 here. If White does play d5, I probably if White had played d5, I probably wouldn't even play a traditional Bononi. I might play b5 on move three, which is kind of an extended, uh, like an accelerated Bononi. So again, if we had seen d5, you would have seen me play b5 aggressively, and then depending on White's approach, you can get some really sharp and fun positions. Uh, g3 not necessarily the most common move here based on the fact that when I take on d4, he's obviously given up the center, and I can uh, I can immediately start placing pieces there. But of course, it's not like white doesn't still have a small, very small edge. Uh, as a dragon player or a Sicilian player, I don't really mind playing a variation where I'm trading my c for the d-pawn, very similar pawn structure potentially in the center. Uh, likely, he'll have to take back with the knight here. Obviously, queen takes would allow knight to c6, a tempo in the queen. So now the question is, where do I play first? Uh, do I put the knight on c6 and uh, start putting pressure on the center that way? Perhaps follow that up with like a g6 dragon type development and see how he chooses to commit his pawns in the center, the pawns on c2 and e2. Uh, whether he plays aggressively with like a Maroxy bind setup or whether he plays a little bit more reserved. Uh, or do I play d5 here with the idea of uh, grabbing the center and potentially playing e5 immediately following that, trying to hold the center with the pawns? It's almost like a reverse Grunfeld in that stance, which... Uh, I'm not even sure I'm really a, a fan of those positions for black, uh, mainly because I think that even though black gets the center, white has uh, some natural play against the pawns. For example, after d5, bishop to g2, if I play e5 and he puts the knight on b3, he can castle and play knight to c3 in those positions, um, again, attacking the center. And I think it's playable for black, but I'm not really a fan of those positions where I have to defend my center against his dynamic development. I'd rather be the one developing dynamically. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.